Right, today we're going to be doing a robin pattern. So here's your pattern. You can see that, but um, in the packs I'll have a, a darker version of this. I've just this is my sketch as I did it. So I've already cut out my pieces, but what I want you to do is draw around the whole robin. Okay, so ignore his feet, ignore his beak. Although I find it helpful to do a kind of a little notch around his beak just so that you remember where it is. It just helps a bit with placement. But you want to include his tummy and his chest and face here. So all, and that's in your medium brown. Okay, and then next I want you to do the, his chest and his main bit of his body. Okay. Now you can use the same, I've, I, actually, I actually didn't cut out this properly so I've slightly missed that bit. But that would go up here. Okay. Now the idea of doing this is so it makes it easy to line up. And if while you're sewing, his tummy just moves a little bit, so say it does that unintentionally as you're sewing, you're not going to end up with a little gap here, which is a bit there's, there's very little, much not much you can do about that if that happens. So by layering up, it means that we're making life easy for ourselves later on. Okay. And you can use the same piece of freezer paper. What I do is I draw all the way round and I put on the most important lines and then I cut it out and then I peel the freezer paper off and I trim the freezer paper down to the next layer so that I'm not wasteful. If you haven't seen freezer paper before, this is it. I've got a big roll of it. And um, yeah, so it's matte on one side, shiny on the other, and there's a wax on it. And so what you do is you trace your shape and draw, draw around your shape with pencil, cut it out and then I use my iron on a normal setting, so normal with steam and you gently press your freezer paper onto your fabric. Now if you bought the kits from me then there's enough fabric to cut out either two this size or one large. If you do want to do the two, you're going to have to be careful because I've cut out just enough to do two so that if you made a mistake you would, you would have a chance to do a second one but don't put your, your single piece right in the middle and expect to be able to get a second one out. Okay, so where are we? So we've got his tummy and we've got his wings. So the next one, let's see if I can work out where this bit goes, like that. Okay. So you're going to trim your freezer paper pattern down or trace again if you'd rather. And we're just going to cut out the red bit. Okay, and they all sit together on top of each other and you can use that, that beaks quite area there. It's quite helpful to locate in them all. Okay, so that's him done. And the next is your branch. Now on the big branch I actually cut this section off just so that it would fit in a smaller piece of fabric. But if you're doing the little one then you can get him out in one there. Okay, and that's out of a dark brown. And then look at this. I'm just I'm just looking, and I've, I should have some red berries, and they've gone astray. Oops, they're stuck to something else. Okay, there should be some red berries, possibly stuck, not stuck to my sleeve. Okay, well I'll have to cut out myself some more. We've got three holly leaves. Okay, and then there should be three little red berries stuck together, but where mine are gone, I don't know. Okay, let's get our back in together next. So you have to, depend on what size you're doing, you'll need to look up how big to do. But this one is. I'm going to be doing the 8 by 6 inches, so my fabric is a little bit bigger than that. So I've got a light brown background and this is my stabiliser. I really would recommend using stabilisers. Free motion embroidery is very difficult to do without a stabiliser. And stabiliser is not the same as using interfacing. It's, it's more like, of interfacing, it's more like pelmet backing. So I like this one which is a Madeira Super Strong Premium cutaway one so you can't tear it and it's, it's a bit like a kind of like a felted but it hasn't it's non-directional it's very nice to sew on okay so the other ones you can use are a papery one if I can find it there we go so this is a a tear away one so this is the more the kind that people use when they're doing kind of digital embroidery you know on the big embroidery machines and so it's, it's, it's papery and you can just tear it into the pieces. And so I, I use this, if I, if I need to be able to get rid of it later on and I want to be able to get all of it out the backing, then I use this one. 
if it's going to be as part of a wall hanging or something where it's not going to be hand quilted or anything like that and I don't need it to be particularly soft then I use this one as my preferred one. Okay so you want to lay all your pieces out including your berries so just make sure that you get the angle of your bird right because they do look you know you don't want him he's going to look funny if he's all twisted so just try and get him about right so he's about like that and then we'll put his branch in at the bottom I don't think that matters so much other than just to get the general whatnot of it right and then some holly leaves I I did the you see what I'm doing yeah I have put them here and I did think that you're going to have to embroider your legs on and it's going to be a bit that people are going to be a little bit worried about getting right so I would leave sewing on these holly leaves until you've got your bird's feet right and then if you really are very unhappy with your bird's feet then you could put your holly here and then you wouldn't be able to see them okay so just to and my berries just they don't want to appear so I thought rather than sneakily doing some I might as well show you how you do this okay so we're just going to trace around these berries with our freezer paper on the matte side okay got my iron so a very, very small little bit of red here I don't, I don't like to waste fabric you know so I'm just going to press this on so shiny side down slightly stuck that to my ironing board which is why my ironing board is looking a bit dingy I could do with getting a new cover for it so we're just tracing around and you may notice I am being terrible and I'm using my embroidery scissors to cut paper but I do this all the time and I've never noticed that my scissors get particularly blunt so and I find it makes it easier to cut it out so and peel that off and there we go that's our berries done so that's how you do it so and I do have other video tutorials which show you it all a little bit slower if that's what you're interested in learning okay here we are at the machine so you can see I've got my free motion foot on well if I can move my hands out of the way so this is what let me just take it off this is what mine looks like okay so it just you have to take the normal foot off the machine and then it kind of fastens in around the back and they all look something like this, they're either a spring or they've got a, a little hook which goes over and this has got a little bit of kind of bounce in it with the way it's shaped. Okay, so this is the thread I'm going to be using for my outline. So this is a moon coat, what is it, 242. It's not too dark, not too light. I, go, I buy it 10 reels at a time and there's a thousand meters on the reel so it lasts me. Make sure that you've got a reasonably full bobbin, not too full. I've, I find on my machine that if I fill it up to where it says, you know, the little thing comes up and says it's full, it just, it sticks when you put it in. It's fine for normal sewing, I wouldn't notice the difference, but when I'm doing free motion sewing, I just do it nearly full. And then I haven't got to worry about it. So these are the colours we're going to be using today. We've got the brown, I've already got one in the machine. And then we want a dark brown to be able to use for the eyes. So it's not quite black, but it is darker than the other one, just to give a bit of... You see? Got see, there we go. Uh, they are di <laughs> you have to take my word for it though, they are different colours. And then a cream, if we've got any highlights to do. And some oranges. I'll work out at the time which one I like better. I've got a variegated orangey yellow. And uh, my zoom not very good on this, so let me go that way. And a, quite a bright carroty orange, because robins really are quite orange. They look like they're going to be. Everyone says they're red, but they're not. They're orange. So, so what we need to do? Line all your pieces up. Okay, we'll take his branch off for now, just because I'll just catch it in my sleeve and end it on the floor. Okay. And what we want to do first is just sew round, round everything without worrying about adding in beaks and legs and all that kind of stuff. We're just going to sew round first. So, all right. So we need to set it up on my machine. There is a free motion setting. Otherwise, you're going to need to get 
stitch lengths down to zero. My machine has a needle down feature which is helpful otherwise you need good foot control and try and always finish with the needle down and that way it doesn't get a jerky bit. And if you've got you need to be able to drop your feed dogs so mine's on the front there's a little switch or there's there's actually also one underneath. Right? So you have to look up what your machine settings are but that's how it is for mine. Right and off we go. So tension to normal so mine's that's four out of nine out for me. I've got a FAF performance 20, um, 2056 if anyone's interested. Okay, so we're going to stir around the edges. I'll try and move me, keep my fingers out of the way. Okay. So around the edges, about a millimeter away. If you make a mistake and you either go too far in, don't worry about it, just get back to where you should be as soon as you can. If you go and miss the fabric, which I do all the time, don't worry about it, keep on going. The worst thing you can do is go back and do it because it's just it makes an extra couple of lines and it just points it's so points fingers go look at me I made a mistake so don't do it just carry on going we're gonna go around a second time so we will catch it down okay so oh, the other thing make sure you've got a pair of scissors to hand before you sit down so we're gonna do a couple of stitches and we're just gonna get rid of that thread end because otherwise it's helpful to have a a scrap pot by you so you can just trim off these things and not just throw them on the floor otherwise you have to hoover them up. Okay so we're going to go down, we're just going to go straight over this beak and not worry about it. Okay? And we're sewing through all three layers here. So just keep on going and then you can kind of decide how you want to go. I'm going to go and get this red bit down first. Okay you can always turn, just make sure that you keep your fabric smooth. I tend to just keep on kind of stroking the fabric, so fingers in the way, to make sure that it stays flat. Some people prefer to use a you know, bond web or something like that. I, I just don't like it. <laughs> it always just comes off or it won't stick on, and drives me mad. So I prefer just to smooth it out. And sometimes things aren't as flat as they could be, but I don't really don't think it matters. Okay, I've gone once all the way around. Now we're not going to put his feet in at this point, but we're going to go around a second time to make sure that all our edges are firmly caught down. But we're also going to start putting in, in some extra details. Okay, so I'm going to go down. And this is where his feet are. So I'm just going to add a little bit of kind of shapes to kind of make it look a little bit furry with his feathers here. Okay. So I'm just doing some zigzags there. I'm going to go up to his chest. And the way I actually sewed, I've got two stitches round here already. So I don't need to do that bit. Okay, and we are going to put the beak in now. I'll just change the angle so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. So you can try and pencil it in, use a bit of chalk. I tend to just go for it. I have my picture. I've got my pattern is on the left here, so I can see it. And so I'm just going to draw it in. We've got an opportunity to. Um, we're going to be filling this in with some colour, and we'll just do two. So I've just done the shape, and I'm ignoring the fact that you can. We can't really see it. I'll, I'll just go a bit further so you can see. <laughs> okay, so I'm ignoring the fact that that's not ma going to match up here. Because we're going to be stitching over the top, and you can't see it. I'm just drawing that shape in. Okay, so next bit we're going to whiz down, we're going to put some feathers in. Okay, so at this point we're going to go up and do some feathers. Oh. And join up that wing there. And I'm just going, coming back exactly on the same line I've gone up. We're not going to do very much because it can start to look quite messy as soon as you do too much in the feathers. And we'll just put a little bit here, like that, in the line in. Okay. And really it's best left to the imagination, I find. Okay, so have a look anywhere you haven't got two lines, two layers of stitching. So we're going to go up here. around his face and here you can kind of exaggerate the sharper lines here okay so that's him pretty much done so we'll just pull him out 
cut that short. I'm not going to worry about the one on the back. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is get our branching. If you've got, if you're doing the larger size, just make sure the two ends of the branch butt up together. Is the get the joint will be hidden by the leaves, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm just going to go on here and just sew all the way around it twice. Okay, so I've just whizzed all the way around that twice. I've not bothered doing trying to make it look particularly barky, and we're trying to keep this nice and simple. So I've just gone all the way down. Sometimes you find, because I don't use the bonder web, that when you're doing long strips, they can kind of wander a little bit. So just try your best to keep them in place. Um, it doesn't matter if they wander. Who cares? Maybe it doesn't end up in quite the same place as it was going to be, but I'm sure it's in just as nice a place. So we're going to take our holly leaves, so make sure the pointy sides are out. And if you're not confident about your legs, well, not your, not your personal legs, if you're not sure that you're going to be happy with your robin legs, then you might want to leave this to the end and then position them, but I'm going to do them now. Because I'm sure my robin legs will be just fine. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around the outside of each of the holly leaves. Okay, so I've just gone all the way around, and when I got to here, I did a little scissors, a little curved line in, give a bit of shape. So do make sure it's slightly curved on each of those, and you don't need to go all the way to the end. And when I got around to the berries, I just drew three circles. Okay. And normally when I do holly leaves, I usually twist them so you can see some of the underside and show different angles, whereas these are dead on leaves, but it makes them easier to do, and you do. There's no reason that you couldn't have a branch of holly looking at you like that. Okay, so I think what we're going to do now, so we've got the beak, we've got our holly, we've got our berries branch, so we could do, I think we have to be brave, we're going to have to be brave and we're going to have to get these feet in. Okay, so get your needle in the right place. Now you can draw them in with a soft pencil, you can use chalk, or you can just go for it. I do think that possibly I've positioned my, my robin slightly high, so he's going to have long legs, but you know, maybe he does have long, long legs. So I'm just going to draw down, I'm just going to sketch it out. So try and narrow in a little bit around what well, the, the kind of wrist, wrist ankle, I'm not quite sure what it is, but above the claws. I don't, I don't know my bird, my bird parts at all, do I? Anyway, off we go. You have to watch me. Mm -hmm. So we're going to narrow in, and then we're just going to... They have, like, three claws. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at what they're called. Three claws. And then they have, like, a thumb bit at the back. So we're just going to drop down and give a suggestion of that bit at the back. OK? And we're going to go back up. Okay, now we're going to have a go, and we're going to draw in the, the fingery claw things. <laughs> and then around. Okay, so we've got three to do. So. Okay, and then back. Now the advantage of doing them in this thread, where I think people sometimes look and think, oh, oh I forgot to cut this thread off. No, that isn't what they think, but... And they, they pick the lighter colour thread and go for it. Is it's We've kind of just sketched out this detail, so if it's bad, we could just mark it out again and it wouldn't matter. Okay, so I would recommend your outlining thread first. And so now we're going to go up and do his other foot. So again, this one's at a bit more of an angle. And it's a bit closer because of the way the branch is shaped. So we're going to more of an angle. And again, just drop down for that thumb bit and then this time we're going to curl around try not to worry too much about this people are not going to be like looking at your robin and thinking oh well he's a lovely robin except for his feet oh his feet look terrible people are not they're going to be looking at a pretty picture okay people people just don't notice the kind of things that you worry about. So don't let it spoil your enjoyment of doing the sewing by worrying about his feet. Okay. So the other thing that we're going to do now, while we've got 
the brown thread on us. We're going to have a go at just putting his eye in. We're going to use the dark brown eventually. But once we've got that dark brown in, we can't really get any more defined because I'm not, we don't want to go darker. So we're just going to have a go at putting in an eye in the right place. And then if we've got it wrong, we can sew over the top of it. So a quick circle round first. Okay, and then stop and have a look. And Do you think it's in the right place? I think that looks fine. Okay, so we're just going to go a couple more times. Now, if this if the first time and you thought, oh, that's in the wrong place, then you could just draw another one. So I, I was doing one yesterday, and not a Robin's eye, but a different eye. And I actually just, I'd got him, I don't know, the eye about three, four mil out, and I did one lap round, and then I just did another one, and I just had to go, did a second eye, three, four mil across, I didn't bother undoing the other one because free motion is really difficult to undo, so you don't want to bother doing that. It'll go down that road. And all I did was, once I got the eye happy, I then just did a bit of embroidery over the other eye, and then you couldn't see where it was. So, because I always, I always put a little bit of outline in round an eye, which is mainly to add to a little bit of interest, because I don't want to do that level of detail everywhere. But the eye is a nice place to concentrate. So, I'm just changing my thread here if you're wondering what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put this dark brown in now. See a nice picture of the back of my hand, sorry. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill in that eye with a darker brown so it stands out a bit better. When you're filling in, cut off that thread as soon as you can. Make sure your foot's always on properly. Take your time and try not to try not to fill it in too much. It's kind of as, as the least amount that you can get away with. But you want to move slow enough, and if you're possible, get your you know your foot going pretty slow, so that it doesn't just bunch up. So it can kind of constant. If you start moving and you're like you're like back and forth, then it it bunches it all up. So nice and slow. Okay, so what we want? Okay, oh, I haven't got me. I haven't got a foot call on if I need feet. So this is another thread colour. So I quite like this one for for beaks. It's a variegated one, which I think is quite forgiving. I like variegated threads. Add a bit more interest. So it's kind of yellows and it's got a bit of yellow in, which makes it quite beaky. Then it's got some browns in as well, which just softens that, you know, yellow in there. And this one's quite a thick thread, so you might find that you, if you're using different threads to whatever you normally do, you might find that you need to have the tension set differently. So I normally put this one instead of four, I'm going to turn it down to two, and I'll keep an eye on it. Okay, so we're just going to fill in that beak next. So just position where you, and we're just lightly. Filling it in enough to hide that red, really. Got a Cut that thread back. And um, we're not going to put in the division for the beak. So try and stitch it in directionally from the tip of the beak out, as opposed to. So then that'll kind of give the suggestion that maybe one of those lines is something to do with the beak opening without actually having to draw it in because I always think as soon as you draw it in you, it looks like you've drawn it in the wrong place whereas we give a suggestion of where it might be well if we got it wrong it doesn't matter so next we're going to go and fill in these feet because he's a bit bigger robin than I normally do he's got quite chunky legs so. So I just stitch in lines back and forth, not going too fast. Don't worry about leaving spaces, we're just giving a suggestion of colour. Sometimes I actually don't bother colouring them in at all, I just leave them.
Okay, so I've just changed to an orange thread here, so it's the light, the darker of the two, so it's just slightly, slightly lighter than his breast is. So we're just going to put in a little bit of stitching under his beak. Let's cut that thread out. Make sure your foot's still on. They do come off sometimes, and they don't have to go with the clatter. Let's get the life out of you. My machine was, my, the bobbin was making a bit weird. So we're just adding a little bit of extra there. Sorry, my hand's in the way there, isn't it? So I've just done a couple of little zigzags and I think we'll just whiz round and put a little bit on his chest as well. Okay. And then we're going to go up to his beak and they have a kind of, the hair kind of, they have a very, well, their brow just goes up. So, we'll just get some of those feathers in. Like that. Let's give that kind of tufty look. So, therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm touching my own forehead here, which you obviously can't see. Okay, so next we're going to go in round that eye. Okay? So, just kind of zigzagging back and forth out from his eye slowly. else we want in that colour. No, I think so. So we're going to change now to a lighter colour. Okay, I've threaded up to cream now. I decided I'm going to miss out that light orange because I don't think we're going to get enough benefit from it. So we're just going to do a, a nice circle around the eye. Okay. You can always use a hand crank your needle down to get it in exactly the right place. So around we go. As soon as you're far enough away, get rid of that thread. Always get it down. They don't keep sewing over, over it, so I'm going to do two laps round. And then we're going for a third because it's looking nice, so we'll just add in a bit more. Okay, right, now while we've got this lighter thread on, we're going to go over. I'm just going to go a little bit of, um, make these berries look shiny. So just sew a little curve on here. We'll do that on all three. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think it'll look nice. I try and make it so they all look the same, so their lights, it looks like our lights coming from the same place. Okay. And the last thing we're just going to, I'm just going to get rid of my threads, and then the last bit you want with this one is we're just going to put a little bit of colour in, a little bit of light catching his eye. But you just want to make sure you got rid of all your threads first so we don't accidentally sew anything in. So we're going to do the same thing, just that little curve. Now this bit is difficult to sew through, so just take your time. Okay, and watch out your foot doesn't come, your machine foot doesn't come off. Because when you start sewing through thick layers, they do sometimes ping off. It's the last thing you want when you're just making your eye look pretty. Okay, so what left to do? I think what we'll do is we'll just put a little bit of something around his feathers. So another thread I said we didn't need. So I'm going to use this one. It'll come out okay. So it's a mid brown variegated. Could use cream, but I think that might be a little bit startling. So we're just going to go over those lines that we put those feathers in earlier. Where we just added those couple of extra lines. We're just going to go repeat them with a slightly lighter coloured thread, just so they stand out a bit because they're slightly lost at the minute. We could just define them a little more, so I won't. I won't be as extreme and pulling them down as far as we did. So I'll just go part of the way. Okay. And take tension a bit. Okay. Get rid of that thread. I'm not going to do it on his tail feathers, just that little bit, just to pick out that upper wing a little bit. So I've gone all the way, I've gone quite a long way up there, up here, I've gone right up to there. Okay, so I think we are done. So trim all your threads and we'll take him over and give him a press. 
Okay, so I've trimmed him down. So it depends on what size you're doing, of what size you need to trim it down to. But the smaller size I trimmed down to seven and a half inches by what was it? Five and a half inches, which is fits. In the, I, I do it that size so it fits in an A5 envelope easily. Okay, um, I've you can position how you want, but I've done it. I'll zoom out in a minute. But um, so I've just caught the edge of the holly here. Can you see? There's my finger. Can't see. There. So I've, I've just trimmed off the edge of the holly, so that I, I made sure that I've definitely got his tail in. Okay, but you've, if you're using the kit, then you know you can you could have positioned him right in the middle of a big piece and make a cushion cover out of him or whatever. Okay, so I trimmed him down. I haven't really done anything on the back. So this is with a stabiliser, so I'm not going to take it out. It makes it easier to get the felt on the back. So I, I only trim anything which I think might get in the way. Depends what you're doing, really. If Sometimes you've got to watch out that you're not going to be able to see the thread, any loose threads through the front. Depends how darker. You know, if you're sewing it on white or something, you might notice the threads. Okay, in the background, so I've got a piece of felt here. And so I've cut that out a quarter of an inch bigger in both directions, so that means we get an eighth of an inch round on the outside. Now if you want, you can cut your piece bigger, position him on, and then once you've got him sewn down, you can trim it later. If you want to put a hanger on the back, before you sew it to it, do it now. Okay, so you could put a little hanger on the back side, and then you can put your dowel through it. But I'm not going to bother. So, so all I do now to finish them off, it's just free motion around the outside. I've changed my bobbin thread at the bottom over to a cream so that it's going to look neat and tidy on the back and I've got the top thread to match. Okay. So if you want to, you can put your normal foot on now and just sew straight lines. I tend to do quite a few of these in a row so it's just easier not to have to bother changing all the settings on everything. Okay.